Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the Visio Visual. Now, the Visio Visual is really a cool visual because it allows you to take Visio diagrams that you've designed and embed them into Power BI reports. And not only are you taking these diagrams, but you're able to actually bind data to those diagrams and take data that you have in a Power BI data model and place it on top of your Visio diagrams. As you can see in the screenshot on the right hand side, where we're looking at an office diagram and we're plotting out both colors and text on top of the diagram based on the structures and the data elements that you have inside of your Power BI data model. So first step obviously is you need to create a Visio diagram. When you're creating that Visio diagram, you need to make it where you can actually bind data to it. So we'll walk you through those steps. And then once you've created that diagram, then you need to store the diagram in one of two places, either OneDrive for Business or SharePoint Online. The reason why that's required is because when you use this custom visual, it's going to prompt you to provide a link from one of those two places, either OneDrive for Business or SharePoint Online. And again, the goal here being creating a diagram and then binding your data to that diagram to be able to visualize it like you see on the right hand side. Now, this one has been developed by Microsoft. This custom visual has been developed by Microsoft. Let's go ahead and walk you through how to go. We're going to actually start by creating a diagram and then we're going to walk you through how to use the visual and bind your own data to it. Now, our first place, of course, to stop is going to be in Visio. So let's transition over to Visio now. All right, so for this example, I'm actually using Visio 2016. Visio is oftentimes licensed separately than the rest of Office, so you may actually go, may need to do some additional licensing, or you can sign up for the trial of Visio if you want to get, a, get your hands on it and play around with it. But I'm going to start by creating really just a blank drawing here for it, a blank diagram, and uh, we'll get started from a blank design service. I'm also going to go ahead and uh, assume that what we're going to do in this example is I'm going to do a layout of a classroom. And I want the layout of the classroom to show horizontally, so I'm going to go up to the design section here and tell it to change the orientation to landscape. And I'm going to place a couple elements in here. We're going to go for maybe a table that we'll have students sit at. Okay, so I can see there's uh, office furniture here. And I can bring in something like a table if I wanted to and increase the size of that so we can actually see it. Something like that. And then I can also bring in some chairs. Let me change the orientation of this to go more horizontal. Uh, and I'll bring in some chairs as well. So I'll look for something like a desk chair. And I'll bring in a nice desk chair like this. You can see the desk chair once I make it a little larger. It's kind of tilted, so I can rotate it like this. And i uh, tell you what I'm going to do for the rest of this, because I'm going to do some layout of this. And this takes a few moments. We're going to fast forward through the video. You will see me make some movement here, but we're going to make it kind of fast. All right, so here we go. All right, so our next step, now that we have our diagram created, is we're going to bind some data to it. And so to get started with this, we're going to go up to the data section here, and we're going to tell it that we want to pull in some external data. So we're going to launch the external data window. We'll then tell it that we want to launch and do some quick links to some data elements. You can also do this in the top left here. But we're going to go select an Excel spreadsheet that we have that we're using for this example, and that example data set that we're going to be using is all classroom data. So that classroom data that we're going to use for this example will be uh, easy to bind to this. It'll be basically we bind a student to a seat, and that way we can kind of see across a seating chart where each of our students are going to be. So I'm going to go find my data. You'll have this data available to you as well. It's called student grades, and I'll hit open. Hit done on this. It's going to allow me to pull in the data that we have from that uh, Excel spreadsheet. And I'll hit done, and we can see each of the columns and each of the rows that we have showing up in this external data section here. And now all I have to do really is bind my students to a seat. And then when we pull this into Power BI, I'll be able to bring in this diagram that we create and actually bind this data, this data set, and have different colors and different text appear next to the data sets that we have here. And just to give, make sure we have a little bit of extra space, I'm going to pull this down just a tad because we're going to put some data probably between here and there. So we need some space between there. So here's what I'm going to do just very quickly. We're going to go ahead and select and add each of these data elements just by dragging them, clicking and dragging each of the students on top of the seat that we want to assign them to. You could assign them to an entire table if you wanted to, but it does have to be a unique value that's bound here. Okay, so you can't like multi-select and, and multi uh, bind multiple rows to one single element here. You do have to have one row for each binding that you do, and you'll see that whenever you get into Power BI that it's important that you did that. All right, 
Uh, you'll notice there's some little graphs that show up behind the scenes. That's okay. Those aren't going to actually show up in Power BI. Those will dissipate here in a few moments. So we've created this diagram. You can see that we've now bound each of the data sets. You see the little link icon appear next to the external data section here. Each of the rows are now bound to a chair. And now what we can do is we can save this diagram, publish it to either SharePoint or OneDrive for Business, and then use that uh, connection, use this inside of Power BI. And so we're going to start by saving it. You will probably want to save this locally as well. So I'm going to save this and uh, go ahead and save it locally. And then we'll go ahead and save it on OneDrive for Business as well. I would recommend just having that backup uh, somewhere else as well. Uh, but for our example here, I'm going to go ahead and save straight to OneDrive for Business into this folder I have called Visio Visual. And I'll select that folder. And I'm going to go ahead and I, you can see I have an example here where I worked out the, the kinks of this ahead of time. But I'm going to uh, call this our Classroom Data Example. Okay, so I'll go ahead and save this to OneDrive for Business. Hit Save. And by the way, I'm going to provide you a completed Visio diagram so you don't have to go through these steps. So you can go grab the link to my Visio diagram and just do it, you know, import it yourself. But I've got this data diagram figured out. I can now close out Visio if I wanted to and go over to the Power BI desktop. Now, as we go over to Power BI desktop, we're going to need to do a couple things. One, pull in our data that we need for this example. So we're going to have to go up to the Get Data section here, go to Excel and go find our data set. And then two, we're also going to need to bring in the Visio Visual Custom Visual. Those are the key things that we always do whenever we're doing some of these custom visuals. So we're going to need to do that as well in this example. So I'm going to go ahead and select our Custom Visuals under Data and bring in Student Grades and hit Open. And I have inside of this workbook a spreadsheet called Grades. We'll go ahead and select that and hit Load to bring that into our data model. Okay, so we've got that here now. Next, I'm going to bring in the Visio Visual. So we can find that by going up to the Custom Visual section up top here and selecting Custom Visuals from the store. And we'll search for the Visio, or you can just search Visio if you want, and you'll definitely find it. We'll search Visio Visual, and we'll find that up here here, and we can add that to the Power BI desktop and start to build on it. You'll see the little Visio icon appear here, meaning that uh, Visio Visual has now been added, and we can add that into our design surface here. Now, the first thing that you're going to do with the Visio Visual is you're going to bind in the unique identifier of the data set that you're using. So keep in mind, whenever we were using the uh, Visio diagram and we bound data to it, there was a student number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all, all the way up to 10. And we want to take that value and bind it in as an ID. So you can see there's an ID column right here that's required as part of the Visio Visual. If you select that and drag that into the ID section, you'll see that the Visio Visual lets you go to the next step. The next step is you're going to need to connect the diagram URL, which means you're going to have to point it to either SharePoint Online or OneDrive for Business, and paste in that URL here so you can connect to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch open a web browser real quickly, and I'm going to bring my, my uh, web browser over here, and I'm going to go to my OneDrive for Business. So let me sign in. I'm going to sign in off screen here real quick, and then I'll bring it back over once I get to OneDrive. But I'm going to go ahead and sign in to my Office 365 account. And once I sign into my Office 365 account, I'll then bring in OneDrive. All right, so I'm signing into my OneDrive account here. And all I really need to do is go find my file underneath Visio Visual. I can see this one that we created a few moments ago called Classroom Data Example. And so I can select that visual here, and it's going to provide the link up top. I can go ahead and snag that link, go back now over to Power BI, paste in that link, and hit Connect. It's now going to connect me into my Visio Visual. It will require me to go ahead and sign into SharePoint Online, so you might expect that to pop up, even though we did it a few moments ago. Power BI, or at least the visual, requires us to do that as well. There we go. So once we sign in, we'll go ahead and be able to close off this screen, and it should allow us to be connected into our Visio Visual. All right, so the first thing you'll likely want to do is validate that the data elements that were in the diagram actually got bound to that student ID that we had. Okay, so again, you can look at the data tab here and you can see the student ID was 1 through 10. I should be able to now go underneath the field mappings here on the right hand side. And you'll see there's an ID field here and there's a values field. The ID is basically to map what's in your diagram to what's in your data set. So if I hit the down arrow on student here, I should see that 1 through 10 number of each of my students and it being bound to each chair inside of our diagram. Okay, so you can kind of also kind of toggle back and forth between each of these values. You can see it'll hop around the map for you, hop around the diagram for you and show you each of those values. Okay, so it looks like that worked correctly. Now the other thing that you can do, by the way, is uh, you can minimize this for a moment. 
You can uh, do some things like where if you want to navigate around, you can use this nice pan and zoom option that you have here. You can also tell it to fit the screen, and that way it'll kind of take it and zoom it back out to see, show you the full map. So you have some options like that built in here to be able to easily navigate within the visual, the Visio diagram. All right, so we've got a nice setup here. So let's actually bring some different data elements into this. What I'd like to do is I'm going to bring in something like the student GPA. Let's also bring in their name. And then let's also bring in their group grade. So that's basically they did some kind of group project, and I can see what the project grade was they got or the grade they got on the overall project. So I can see I can bring those different data elements in here. You can see that there was some things that changed on the diagram. All the chairs lit up in different colors. There's some text above it. So let's actually walk you through how we can adjust some of these things and, and show you what's been done here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and expand the field mappings. And you'll see underneath the value section that we have that student GPA is actually lighting up the different colors that we see on the map. And you can see you can adjust those colors here. For example, if you wanted to, you can adjust and say, well, uh, what if I have more data added? Then I want to be able to maybe adjust the GPA values that I have in here. So maybe I can do something like this. I'm going to delete out the blue threshold that I have. And you can see it changed some of the chair colors back to brown. Uh, but I want to do something like this. I want to make it anyone that has a 0 to 2.5 GPA is in the red. Anyone that has a 2.5 to 3.0 GPA is in the, let's make it yellow. Okay. And then anyone that is in the 3.0 to 4.0 range is going to be, let's make it more of a true green here. All right. So we can see those different values now light up on the screen, showing us that we're able to make any of our values, especially our measures here, show based on the, the colors that we want to uh, display here. So we have different colors. We can change between colors and text. Okay, so you have two options. You can only have one color on here, by the way. But you can change between either colors or text that are displayed. In this case, we're using colors for student GPA. Then we'll work our way down to some of the other fields that we have in here. We do have some non-measure values as well, like the name of the student. Obviously, the name of the student isn't going to control the color, but it can control the text that we see. Uh, unfortunately, right now, the text is incredibly hard to see. So we may do something like increase the text size. So I can bump up the text size to something like, let's say, 25. Scroll down here, select 25. And let's select 25 on the label and the text. And then what we might actually end up doing is removing the, the label altogether, because you can see here it's really kind of smushing everything together. So you can actually turn off the labels if you wanted to. You can turn off this show label option, and then it just shows the names here. So you can do something like this if you want to full screen it and see it a little better. Now I can see each of the students' names very clearly right above their, their chair. You can also kind of adjust the orientation of this a little bit if you want to change the horizontal position. Right now it's left-oriented. You can move it to the right. We can move it uh, to the left edge if we wanted to. You could move it to the far left if you wanted to. You have some ability to adjust that as you wish. All right, so we're going to move that. Let's just put it back where it was in the left uh, position. You notice there it actually kind of changed the order of operations there as far as what's displayed. You can fix that again later if you wanted to. You can also adjust the vertical positioning. So how do you want it higher, lower? How, how do you want it? Right now it's showing above the shape. You could show it at the top edge. So that's just the edge of the shape there, really within the shape itself. You could put it on the bottom, wherever you'd like to see it, you can kind of change the position of it here. All right, so let's put it above the shape again. Um, you can also change things like the colors of the text. You can add a little borderline or a line under, underline their, their name if you wanted to, so you have some options there as well. All right, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to adjust the uh, group grade now a little bit. So the group grade is showing as a, a text here as well. You can adjust the position of it if you'd like. You can change the vertical or horizontal position. Right now it's showing in the left. You can, again, we can shift it to the edge. We can move it around. We can put it back in the left if we wanted to, and that pushed it back below the name here. You probably also want to increase the text size, so maybe we'll increase the text size of both the label and the actual item here a little bit. So let's make it uh, maybe not 20 point font because that looks really big, but let's make it something like 15 point font. And then we'll make the actual value also show in 15 point font so we can see both the grade and the label showing here very clearly. Let's actually bump that down just a smidge lower so that it all fits in there without touching each other. There we go. All right, so we're able to see those show up very clearly in here. We're able to see each the name and the value showing up. Now, within inside the visual, there are a few other things that you can do. Um, for example, anytime you make changes to the visual, say, for example, somebody updates the Visio diagram or you update your data in some way, you'll likely want to hit the little refresh button up at the top here. That basically goes and reconnects to the Visio diagram that you have on SharePoint Online or on OneDrive for Business. 
And then that way, whenever you go to use it, it's going to pull in the updates that you've made. So keep that, uh, be aware of that. It also has some cross highlighting that you can do as well. So if I were to bring in maybe perhaps a, a table in here or a matrix, let's bring in a matrix for this example. And inside my matrix, I wanted to see something like, uh, let's say, for example, I wanted to see the, the table that people sat at and maybe their names. And then I also want to see something like their average GPA in here. So let's bring in student GPA and make sure we do an average of it. Let's do an average instead of a sum. And then we can drill down a step here if we wanted to. Actually, let's do this option for drilling. And now we can see each of the students here. Of course, we can increase the text size of that some if we wanted to. But this is fine for the time being. And then what I can do now is anytime I select any item in here, you'll notice that it zooms immediately over to where that student is. You can also select the entire team, and then it's going to highlight the two students that are part of that team. So you have some, some highlight or some cross highlighting that occurs here. And that way you can see, oh man, they, these two had a pretty low GPA. I wonder if they're sitting next to each other. And not only can you see that from the table itself, but you can also see that in the Visio diagram. And maybe it's some interactions in the room that are maybe causing some distraction for lower grades. And you can also, again, highlight any other areas, zoom directly to those students that are part of that diagram. Okay. So it works ba uh, both ways as well. So you can actually select someone individually with inside of the diagram, and then it does cross highlighting occurs with inside of my table as well. So that's nice that it works in both directions if you, if you desired it to. All right, so that's the Visio diagram. It's a little bit longer example, but uh, it, you, know, it just, you have to do a little bit of setup to get the Visio diagram created. And then the interaction, once you get it into Power BI, is really not terribly difficult. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next video. Thanks a lot.